Hi there, and welcome back to my channel, our Simple Abundance Year with Sarah Von Bronick and her book, Simple Abundance. We are in the section of the book, where this is July 2020, where we have gotten into the topic of food and cooking. And today's video is going to be about three of the entries, the 10th, 11th, and 12th of July, that are related to cooking. And I know from the comments on the last video that food can be a sensitive topic. And I have certainly shared with you guys that I have sort of a love-hate relationship with it myself. I like the idea of it. And of course, I loved that last video and thinking about all the memories and things. But I share with you guys in your struggles or now not being able to eat certain foods because I'm certainly there myself or there's that judgment of good food and bad food. So I appreciate your honesty and I'm right there with you guys and I've had my food issues probably since uh, my preteen years so I get it. But just like when we talked about the garden entries we have a cat in the background that wants to make herself known, by the way. <laughs> of course, as soon as I start filming, she was sleeping a minute ago. That's my kitty, Annabelle. Uh, anyway, what I was saying was just like the videos about the garden and all the tie-ins with life and the garden, that's what we're hoping to get out of this section as well. Not just necessarily food, but also the art of cooking. That's what we're going to talk about today. So. In today's entry, July 10th, it's called Kitchen Mysticism. And I really like what she talks about in this one. And she brings in, we know Sarah's principles by now, joy, harmony, beauty, order, simplicity, and gratitude. And she brings in the grace of harmony into this one. And she shares that, you know, as she's writing this book and other books that Sometimes she felt like her life was just so out of whack that she was like, how can I be writing this book when I'm not living by these principles, you know? And I guess I feel that way a little bit too about the channel. And I told you guys that at the beginning of the year that I sort of struggled with like, who am I to have this channel <laughs> when things are so out of whack for me as well. Um, but I can appreciate her sharing that and and we're all in this journey together no matter where we are at in it and if we were already living all these principles then why would we even be exploring them right everything would be perfect and we we'd be out doing so many things that brought us joy that there wouldn't even be time to look at a YouTube video <laughs> so anyway so let me see uh, what I wanted to share with you about this one. Oh, she shared a story about how a person that she was reading a book by, uh, oh, she only says a gifted woman writer. She doesn't say the name of it. But this person went off and lived in a monastery and really got balance in her life. And Sarah was envious of that and wanted to do it. But what she decided was that she was going to make her kitchen into sort of her own m monastery and try to get the same uh, sense of balance through cooking. So she says, or actually this is a writer, uh, Laura, Esquivel, who wrote Like Water for Chocolate. Have you heard of that? It's also a movie too. And that author says, the home is a sacred place where you can communicate with the four elements of the universe, earth, water, air, and fire. You mix it with your love and emotions to create magic. Isn't that neat? Through cooking, you raise your spiritual level and balance yourself in a world that is materialistic. In a world that is frequently out of kilter, the kitchen is the mystical, is as mystical as a monastery. Yeah, isn't that neat? And then I'm just gonna read this paragraph because it sounds so juicy and 
good and maybe you'll it'll get your creative juices going as far as something really simple that sounds so good. Slice red and yellow bell peppers, tiny eggplants and zucchinis into strips. Chop red onion, fresh bagel, basil, oregano, and Italian plum tomatoes. Saute slowly in good olive oil and minced garlic until the vegetables are soft. Take a sip of wine. Add penne pasta to boiling water for 12 minutes. Great fresh Parmigiano, Reg, Reggianos, I don't know, cheese. Warm store-bought rosemary and ricotta, ficotta in the oven. I wonder why she says store-bought, because you could definitely have those from your garden, right? Sprinkle with cheese. Call everyone to the table. Stop and give thanks. Offer a toast and a thanksgiving for good health, love, companionship, delicious food, and a moment of contentment. A day fully filled, simply abundant. Doesn't that sound neat? That made me think of so many movies that I enjoy that have the food in them. I mentioned that Eat, Pray, Love before, the book by Elizabeth Gilbert and the movie with Julia Roberts. And then I was also thinking about the book and movie Under the Tuscan Sun because that character is so feeling so low and she just says to one of the other characters like I want to have someone to cook for and then later in the movie she says she realized that she had lots of someone's to cook for because she had all these guys helping her with the renovations of the house that she bought over in Tuscany and so she just started cooking up a storm and everybody was enjoying it and so it wasn't what she actually meant and like she wanted to have a significant other to cook for but she looked around and realized that she had a lot of people to cook for so i guess right now with life we're sort of separated but i mentioned in the last video about maybe if you have things from your garden that you can make extra and share with people you could always leave something on someone's doorstep right some of you know where I live, hint, hint, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think there is a joy in sharing the cooking and that whole paragraph, it just sounds so good the way she described it. And then just being with people and giving thanks and enjoying the meal together. I can see it, it does have that magical, mystical feel yeah you like it too right <laughs> okay and then july 11th again more with the cooking and this time cooking as art creative discoveries in the kitchen it's called so i really like this one too because she again this is a great parallel to life and the kitchen and cooking okay so obviously when you're an artist and you have clay and you just start from scratch and you make you know it could take many forms and turn out differently than you think but you're putting your creativity and your energy into it and then you have the finished product so just like cooking you can be that way too and you can try and you can fail and you can fix things like if something's a little too spicy and then you can find a way to soften that spice or vice versa and so i really like that idea of making your cooking into little artist projects what do you think about that have you ever done something like that where you think of it as like a fresh start a fresh new i always say palette i think it would be i think that's the word a fresh palette. I know that's like an eating thing too when you I know like when my cousin would have us over for a holiday he always had sherbet at the beginning of the meal and you were supposed to eat it because it was supposed to freshen up your palate before you ate but I'm pretty sure that's also the word in, for, in terms of an artist as well and I like how she says a paring knife can be as creative as a paintbrush scraping slicing shredding Stirring, simmering, sauteing are all sl slights of hand that switch your conscious 
mind into artistic autom automatic pilot. That's true. You could be so accustomed to making certain recipes that they just come so naturally, right? I can't say that I'm... Well, there's a few things that I feel like I could make without really thinking, but I, I kind of do have to follow directions if I'm doing anything super crazy. But, uh, and again, if you mess up, she's quoting Jacqueline Duvall. She wrote a novel called Reckless Appetite, Tight, a culinary romance. So Jacqueline says, if, you, if your regrets lin linger, if you cannot find inspiration in solitude, then you still have much to learn from the writers and the poets and the cooks on becoming an artist of your own life. We talked about that earlier in the year, becoming an artist of your own life, right? You can never recreate the past, but you can shape your own future and you can make a cake also. That was one of the July joyful simplicities and now we know why. Oh my goodness, sorry for the. <laughs> I guess it's actually really cute at this point. She is just about always in every video, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so she did tell us to make a cake in the jo July Joyful Simplicities. And Sarah tells us in this entry to try to make a cake from scratch. I don't know that I could do that. I really don't. But she also does say at the end that if you make it from a box, that just like an artist would know if it was like a subpar sort of like knock off of another artist's work or something like that, that you as the baker would know that you you kind of cut the corners and didn't do it from scratch. But I don't know. I, I don't think I could make a cake from scratch. I bet some of you could. I don't, I don't have that, you know, like in my head. But anyway, she, she wants us to do that. And then she says, um, this is the best thing. I love this thing now. Hold on. Um, okay. If something is perplexing you now, see the situation as simply an ingredient in the great recipe that's real life. Isn't that cool? Each ingredient makes its own authentic contribution to the whole, yet each ingredient changes. The salt and the sugar become one, transformed by the four elements of the universe, fire in the oven, water from the tap, earth, in the grain and air embracing all. Do not discount the fire that burns in your soul. The water of your sweat and tears, the earthliness of perseverance and every breath you take as you struggle to master the art and unravel the mystery of an authentic life. That's pretty awesome. So, see how she's tying in cooking like we did with the garden. And also we did talk earlier, I think it was back in February, about becoming the artist of your life. But in this case, she's having us think about all the ingredients that we're cooking with. And I remember when I shared with you guys the the video on Harmony way back at the beginning of the year when I was talking about all the principles individually, I said I felt like the relationships that I have in my life are kind of like the notes on a page if you think about Harmony as music. And so that's very similar to these ingredients being the little ingredients to the great recipe that's real life. That was her word. <sighs> I like that one. And then the last one I'll talk about is July 12th entry and then I'll come back next week with you guys to talk about some more things. But this one's called How to Cook a Wolf. And again, sometimes we talk about things more than once during the year. We did talk a few months ago and that might have also been in February back about the fears that we may have. It was when we were talking about being on safari and 
and how there can be things lurking in the shadows and so she's connecting the wolf to because we think of who's afraid of the big bad wolf that's how she starts the entry too and she also says we all are because we all have fears right of some kind and she has a poem here by charlotte perkins gilman it's a little excerpt but it's i'll just read it it says there's a whining at the threshold there's a scratching at the floor to work to work in heaven's name the wolf is at the door and so she takes that into her writing where she says sooner or later he's whining and scratching at everybody's door that's sarah's words when the wolf arrives and there's hold on That's a very convoluted sentence because there's other quotes and everything. I'm not going to say that. But when the wolf arrives, can you conquer it? Can you cook it instead of being afraid of it? Those are my words. How do you do it? By not running scared when the wolf arrives. By not giving in to fears that he would blow the house down. Know that the twists and turns of fate come in cycles. By concentrating on the good at hand today, a good glass of wine, a ravishing tomato, a loaf of warm bread, cheese, and the best butter you can spread, any hunger can be satiated. A beautiful sunset, a lively conversation, a loving relationship, music, a deep breath, and a grateful sigh for what is made up has made up these moments to remember the good life does not depend on extravagant indulgences the good life does not deprive it expands as it exalts and then she's quoting mfk fisher who wrote how to cook a wolf <laughs> And there's more in this entry from her if you want to look at it. It's on page 300. But MFK Fisher closes by saying, if you rely on, quote, your own innate sense of what you must do with the resources you have to keep the wolf from sniffing too hungrily through the keyhole. And I didn't finish the whole sentence, sorry. You can still live with grace and wisdom if you rely on your own innate sense of what you must do with the resources you have to keep the wolf from sniffing too hungrily through the key door the keyhole so what are the tools that we have to overcome fear love right all those things the beautiful sunset great conversations, relationships, music, breathing, all of those things. Finding the joy and focusing on the good, she said. That's what this journey is all about, right? That's what we're doing. And I can appreciate all of these entries today and the way they tie into life. and overcoming fear with love. We've talked about that as well. There's a lot already in this whole section. So even if food is not your favorite topic, and even if you're not really a good cook, I think you can still uh, gain some, some wisdom and tips for life from this section too. So I hope you stick around. Thanks for watching and I'll be back next week where we talk more about the the uh, cooking it looks like I made a list of the various things because some of them I wanted to combine and the next one I have written down is meal prep so there'll be some things to talk about with that and it will all tie into life and this simple abundance path so we're all here together and I will see you then have a great weekend bye